Welcome back, YouTube family. Glad you're with us today on Veterans Day and Remembrance Day. And so that we're doing a little bit different content. Um, we've got two videos going up today. One will be for Remembrance Day, and that'll be Terry Fox and remembering a Canadian great. And uh, for Veterans Day, we're going to learn about the Star Spangled Banner a little yeah. bit because we're not Americans, believe it or not. So many of you guys have asked us that question. We're not Americans. So yes. um, we're going to learn about the Star Spangled Banner today because we don't really know much about it. I mean, you know, I've obviously heard that sports games or yeah. whatever, right? But um, I don't even feel like I know all the words to it. You know, like sometimes you hear it and you think it's one word, but it ends up being a different word. Yeah, for sure. So um, you don't really know like a ton of the history behind it or anything like that. No so. history at all, unfortunately. You know, we learn about Canadian history when we grew up. You guys learn about American history, some offset between the two but um you know i didn't even know that it came came from uh, a poem uh that revolved around the 1812 the war mm -hmm. of 1812 and yeah. now i do know that just from a little backstory of what we're going to get into with this so i'm um, excited to check it out but like i said this is for our veterans day so if you are a veteran uh and uh, you have provided service to the country in any way we are yes. grateful for that service um for the u.s for canada for north america obviously we're neighbors but um anybody around the world if you're providing a service that's helping humanity as a whole this stuff Thank is appreciated so, so yes. um we're gonna get a little bit of history lesson but before we do do that we uh, have been adding a few questions in to our videos a little bit of trivia and pop quizzes on you guys so our question to you we'll see if you know your american history is um in what year did congress pass this into law that made it the, the official national anthem. So what year was that? And we'll give you the answer to that at the end of the video. Yes. So um, are you excited to learn a little bit about the Star Spangled Banner? Yeah, I think it'll be interesting to learn more about where this came from. And like you said, you know, you hear it all the time at sports events and stuff like that. And I've never really, you know, taken the time to actually sit and think like, where did this come from? Yep. What does it all mean? Right. So yeah, like cool. how did they kind of formulate this? So yeah. I'm excited. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. Let's roll. There was a lawyer once, his name was Francis Scott Key. He penned a song that I'm sure you're aware of, you've seen it, it's in most hymnals throughout our churches, it's called the National Anthem. It is our song as an American. We go, however, to a ball game, we stand in our church services and we sing the words of that song and they float over our minds and our lips and we don't even realize what we're singing. Most of us have memorized it as a child, but we've never really thought about what it means. Let me tell you a story. Francis Scott Key was a lawyer in Baltimore. The colonies were engaged in vicious conflict with the mother country, Britain. Because of this conflict and the protractedness of it, they had accumulated prisoners on both sides. The American colonies had prisoners and the British had prisoners. And the American government initiated a move. They went to the British and they said, let us negotiate for the release of these prisoners. They said, we want to send a man out to discuss this with you. They were holding the American prisoners in boats about a thousand yards offshore. And they said, we want to send a man by the name of Francis Scott Key. He will come out and negotiate to see if we can make a mutual exchange. On the appointed day in a rowboat, he went out to this boat and he negotiated with the British officials. And they reached a conclusion that men could be exchanged on a one-for-one -one basis. Francis Scott Key, jubilant with the fact that he'd been successful, went down below in the boats and what he found was a cargo hold full of humanity, men. And he said, men, I've got news for you tonight, you're free. He said, tonight I have negotiated successfully your return to the colonies. He said, you'll be taken out of this boat, out of this filth, out of your chains. As he went back up on board to arrange for their passage to the shore, the admiral came and he said, we have a slight problem. He said, we will still honor our commitment to release these men, but it'll be merely academic after tonight. Hmm. It won't matter. And Francis Scott Key said, what do you mean? He said, well, Mr. Key, he said, tonight we have laid an ultimatum upon the colonies. Your people will either capitulate and lay down the colors of that flag that you think so much of, or you see that fort right over there, Fort Henry? He said, we're going to remove it from the face of the earth. 
Wow. He said, how are you going to do that? He said, if you will, scan the horizon of the sea. And as he looked, he could see hundreds of little dots. And he said, that's the entire British war fleet. He said, all of the gunpowder, all of the armament is being called upon to demolish that fort. It will be here within striking distance in a matter of about two and a half hours. He said, the war is over. These men would be free anyway. He said, you can't shell that fort. He said, that's, that's a large fort. He said, it's full of women and children. He says, it's predominantly not a military fort. He said, don't worry about it. They said, we've left them a way out. And he said, what's that? He said, do you see that flag way up on the rampart? He said, we have told them that if they will lower that flag, the shelling will stop immediately. And we'll know that they've surrendered, and you'll now be under British rule. Wow. Francis Scott Key went down below and told the men what was about to happen. And they said, how many ships? He said, hundreds. The ships got closer. Francis Scott Key went back up on top and he said, men, I'll shout down to you what's going on as we watch. That's so crazy. Like, Wild. I mean, like I said, we wanted to learn about this, but it is ironic and fitting, obviously, for the national anthem that this all revolves around a flag. Mm -hmm. The you flag know, that... You got to bring down the flag. Yeah. If you bring down the flag and say that you've, you know, you forfeit, it's over. You know, you got a way out, but if not, we're going to, you know, rip, rip you apart. Yeah. And so I assume that's going to get into some more patriotic vibes that maybe they're not going to do that. Yeah. And you know how, you know, the star spangled banner is yeah. why it's so important. Yeah. The flag is such a key, uh, imagery for them, for their, yeah, and their stance and their patriotism and why you should respect it so much because in respecting it, well, I don't know how this is going to play out, but in respecting the flag, you don't know what that can lead to by upholding your standards and your values. Yeah. Right. But, uh, you know, reflecting back on this story a little bit, it's just so crazy that too, that you think about how, you know, they're talking about how they have these, you know, prisoners in these boats, you know, how brutal those conditions must have been. These are not like cruise ships. You know what no, I'm saying? You're in a cell this is on a boat in the 1800s, early yeah. 1800s. You know, there's the, the like disease that yeah, probably festers disease, down there, yeah. you know, um, like you said, they're probably in their own feces, you know, it's like probably just the worst conditions that you can imagine. And we just, I think, you know, that makes this story obviously even more compelling. We take it for granted for as well for the situation that we have today and, you know, how lucky we are to be in the situation that we're in. Um, and, how, you know, the sacrifice that we said in the beginning of all these people that, you know, committed themselves to serving the country, protecting the women and children that they just talked about. Yeah. And, um, you know, how we overlook and oftentimes in today we disrespect them so much, like their sacrifice. They gave up everything. These are a lot of cases, 16, 17, 18, 19 year old young men, you know, that sacrificed everything, you know, their lives literally um, and didn't get anything out of it. Right. And we just, you know, have people today that are just so, you know, like I said, just, oh yeah, whatever, you know, it's, it's, and you know, then you have the Star Spangled Banner, the flag and why you should respect it, those values, like I said. And, um, you know, that's just the perspective that I start to think about when they give you these details. Yeah. And I think that people these days, right in, in our generation are just so far removed from what it's like to even have anything close to touch, to be in a position like that. Right. Mm -hmm. so Not even close. They can't, it's not, I don't say they can't, but they choose not to place themselves in that person's shoes to see what that would have been like to be able to have the respect and the, I guess, admiration for these people for doing and sacrificing what they did. Because to them, like, they're just like, well, it doesn't affect me. I don't, I'll never be in that position. I don't. Today. Yeah, exactly. Right. So. But unfortunately, you know, I, and I, I wish this doesn't happen. I hope this doesn't happen. But, you know, there's been wars and stuff throughout human history ongoingly. It's not something that just is expected to kind of fall off the face of the yeah. planet. I don't think we're that smart yet. But, <laughs> but um, you know, I, that's unfortunately what happens. It's like we get into this way of thinking where we think it won't happen to us. Mm -hmm. And then it does and nobody's prepared for it. Yeah. And then we have to go through this process of the pain that all these guys have, 
you know, experienced and be like, we don't want anybody to have to experience that again. But when we start forgetting is what the problem, when the problems pop up because we don't realize how bad it really was. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, that's what this imagery and these thoughts are provoking for me is like, I don't want to see anybody have to go through that again. Right. Because that sacrifice was, you know, a vehement sacrifice. It was, it was made so that you know, people wouldn't have to go through that. Again, yeah, right? exactly. The hopes that we would learn and grow. Anyways, but. let's keep it going. We get a little more of the story. Sorry for the rant, guys. But you know, how, you know me. If you've been on this channel for a while, you know, you know what happens from time to time. <laughs> Went back up on top and he said, men, I'll shout down to you what's going on as we watch. As twilight began to fall and as the haze hung over the ocean as it does at sunset. Suddenly, the British war fleet unleashed. <clears throat> he says the sound was deafening. There were so many guns that there were no reliefs. He said it was absolutely impossible to talk or hear. He said suddenly the sky, although dark, was suddenly lit. And he says from down below, all he could hear the men, the prisoners saying was, tell us where the flag is. What have they done with the flag? Is the flag still flying over the rampart? Tell us. One hour, two hours, three hours into the shelling. Every time the bomb would explode and it would be close to the flag, they could see the flag in the illuminated red glare of that bomb. And Francis Scott Key would report down to the men below, it's still up. It's not down. The Admiral came and he said, your people are insane. He said, what's the matter with them? He said, don't they understand this is an impossible situation? Francis Scott Key said he remembered what George Washington had said. He said, the thing that sets the American Christian apart from all other people in the world is he will die on his feet before he'll live on his knees. Freedom. The Admiral said, we have now instructed all of the guns to focus on the rampart to take that flag down. He said, we don't understand something. Our reconnaissance tells us that that flag has been hit directly again and again and again, and yet it's still flying. We don't understand that. But he said, now we're about to bring every gun for the next three hours to bear on that point. Francis Scott Key said the barrage was unmerciful. All that he could hear was the men down below praying. The prayer. God, keep that flag flying where we last saw it. Sunrise came. Got goosebumps. He said there was a heavy mist hanging over the land, but the rampart was tall enough. There stood the flag completely nondescript in shreds. The flagpole itself was at a crazy angle, but the flag was still at the top. Francis Scott Key went aboard and immediately went into Fort Henry to see what had happened. And what he found had happened was that that flagpole and that flag had suffered repetitious direct hits. And when hit had fallen, but men, fathers, who knew what it meant for that flag to be on the ground, although knowing that all of the British guns were trained on it, walked over and held it up wow. humanly until they died. Their bodies were removed and others took their place. Well, Francis Scott Key said what held that flagpole in place at that unusual angle were Patriots' bodies. He penned the song, Oh say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming. For the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that the flag was still there. Mm -hmm. oh, 
man, I'm it's getting choked insane. up a little bit. Just, you know, hearing the stories of the, you know, heroics that obviously took place. Again, we, we talked about it a little bit briefly. I can't even imagine that happening today. And, you know, how devoted they were to the fight, to their cause. You know, even the men below praying, what they were praying for praying for it was that the the flag would stay standing right like that they're in those conditions yeah and that's what they're, they're praying, praying for. for they're not praying for their freedom yeah they're praying they're praying that they keep this flag up yeah. because and that they don't get taken over by british rule yeah but they know as well that it's a symbol right to them it's a symbol of strength it's a symbol of who we are it's a symbol of what america represents like you said about george washington and um you know, and then stating that line that we just listened to, that that flag was still there, right? Um, and what now that means so significantly more. Yeah. When I hear that line every time now, I'm going to think of this story. Well, I think something that stands out to me too is that, you know, obviously in general for any country, your flag is a symbol of your country's values. Patriotism. Your, exactly, right? So, you know, in general, any country isn't going to be happy if someone's disrespecting their flag, right? But I feel like in the past, I've heard stories of Americans being like almost extra offended or like extra connected to their flag. And it makes sense why, right? Especially given this story, um, given their history, right? So, I mean, I've heard stories about, you know, people getting really upset if somebody like spit on the flag or stepped on the flag or burned the flag or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, obviously that's rude. It's disrespectful. I can understand like why the average person would be upset with that. But it makes sense why like people in America are even that much more emotionally tied to their flag because of this story and this, like what it represents specifically. Yeah, and I think the values that America is, you know, supposed to uphold, like I said, that freedom is number one and that, yes. you know, that you stand for your, your people and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, we had this thing going on more recently, right, where uh, people were deciding to not take part in the national anthem in different ways and sports and stuff like that. And I never really understood why it was such a big deal. Like I under, like from my when perspective, like kneel or like during, when people are like kneeling, during, yeah. yeah, yeah, not kne kneeling, don't want to put their hand in a certain position, don't want to sing, whatever. There's been different people that have done different things. And to me, I never really understood why it was such a big deal. I didn't, I didn't really think that it was appropriate, but I never really understood why people cared so much, right? Why, you know, they got up in arms about it. And now I completely understand because it's not just you're, you're not taking, there may be things going on in, in the country that you don't agree with, but it has nothing to do with these dudes that sacrificed everything that they had for you, yeah. you know? So by inherently by disrespecting the anthem, you're disrespecting them. Yeah, and I mean, I think that maybe those people thought their hearts were in the right place, but I can totally see why that's perceived as disrespectful, especially to those who have given and sacrificed so much for the country and the American people as a whole, like a veteran or, you know, somebody who gives service, so. Yeah, I mean, different times, right? Like, 100%. You know, it's, it's hard to um, say what's going on today is, you know, reflective of what was going on then, but... I think, you know, this really highlights to me, you know, why in America specifically, why you would be so passionate about your flag, about your national anthem, like you were saying. So yeah. anyways, Sacrifice um, at its finest. yeah, let's keep it going and see where we're going to end with this. Obviously, like I said, I got you know, a little bit choked up there just hearing him speak because he's getting choked up as he's saying it. Yeah. You're hearing them, you know, voice their camaraderie in the background. Like, yeah, you know, so interested to see how we're going to finish up. Gave proof through the night that the flag was still there. Oh say does that star-spangled banner yet fly and wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. The debt was demanded. The price it was paid. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming 
whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets break clear the bombs bursting in air gave through the night there are flags Say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? Say, does that star-spangled banner yet wait o'er the land of the free and the home of the? So I guess we don't find out the end of the story and how that played out and just gave us a, you know, a backdrop of what led to the national anthem aspect. Yeah. But I would like to know how the... And then translating that into the national anthem. Yeah. Um, it was a really nice finish with the national anthem as well there. And, uh, you know, got to see it firsthand after we had just experienced, you know, what they all went through and what it meant and everything. I also thought it was cool that they like read out the poem first and then did the national anthem right after. So you could see how that kind of translated and its mm -hmm. influence on that. Yeah. And obviously I think they won the battle, right? And that's probably why they ended up making the, you know, poem about it. But, um, I was just curious how that played out because they were getting shelled like no tomorrow yeah. and, you know, stood through all that. But I guess this is not the point of that, <laughs> this video. Um, I learned a lot, though. I, I had no idea that this was what it was re representing. And it's going to hold so much weight. And it's totally true. The Star Spangled Banner, as I've never heard it. And I'll probably never hear it the same way ever again. Yeah, for sure. Me too. Um, so I guess we should give them uh, the answer to the, to the trivia there. Yeah. So the answer is 1931. 1931 is when it was enacted as a national anthem. So maybe you learned something as well as us today. <laughs> or maybe you're, you know, tip top on your American history and then we're just noobs. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I would say it seems like Americans are pretty, you know, up to date on some of their historical context. So yeah. more than some of the Canadians I know about their Canadian history. Yes, that is true. But if you want to know, learn some Canadian history, we've got a Terry Fox video as well. Yeah, you should coming check that out. It's a really great story. Yeah, so uh, that might be up a little bit later this afternoon. Could be up this morning. Who knows what order they're going to come up in. But anyways, guys, we appreciate you stopping by with us. Hopefully this stood out and was a, was a great video for you to watch today. If you did and you enjoyed it, uh, if you enjoyed it, hit that like button. Leave us a comment. Let us know how this resonated with you. Anything that you want to add. Uh, we always appreciate your insights. And uh, hopefully you come along on this ride that we're on with the music, sports, and comedy that we're going to continue with over the next couple of days. And uh, we'll see you around in our next video. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.